Hello everybody! Thank you very much for inviting me to this beautiful event. I'm very grateful and honoured to be part of it. And I'm here to make a short presentation of my book on Queen Christina. It was published in 2019 by Nordic Academic Press with the uh, precious help and support of many uh, foundations, among which the uh, uh, foundation of the current King of Sweden. It was originally written in Italian and published in 2013. The uh, music in the background is by Arcangelo Corelli, it's the uh, uh, Trio Sonatas, opera number one, uh, dedicated to Queen Christina. Christina of Sweden has been researched and written about for her many roles. The role of Queen, from a political point of view, the role as a lighthouse for peace, culture and learning, the role of an ante literam fem feminist, a woman who was so different from the stereotypes of women in her century, who refused to be a wife and a mother and wanted to follow her dreams. The role that is more dear to me when it comes to Queen Christina is that of great patroness of music and musicians. This is also the main topic of my book. I'm here, in fact, to thank her, both as a Roman and as a female singer, for her, the immense gifts and treasures she gave my city and for the help and support she gave women singers. That's why I consider Christina as also my queen. Everybody in Rome knew who La Regina was. If you had asked any common person in Rome in the second half of the 1600s who the Regina was, they would answer the Swedish queen, Queen Christina. It is not by accident that one of the most obvious traces of her passage in Rome, the inscription on the Porta del Popolo through which she entered officially and triumphantly on the 23rd of December 1655 reads, to the happy and favourable entrance, Anno Domini, 1655. No need to write her name. Everybody knew that the entrance was that of Queen Christina. Christina made Rome the most lively and extraordinary musical centre in Europe. Her life in Rome was like a film with a constant soundtrack, the music of her time. From the moment she entered Rome officially through Porta del Popolo in 1655 to her funeral in 1689, her life was constantly accompanied by music. For her official entrance in Rome, Iste es Speciosa and Te Deum for six choirs by Orazio Benevoli were performed. During the first carnival dedicated to Christina, which became famous as the Queen's Carnival in 1656, a series of operas of allegorical moralistic kind were performed, La Vita Umana, Dal Male Il Bene, both by Marazzoli and with libretto by Giulio Rospigliosi, the future Pope Clement IX. Oratorios were also performed, the most famous being the Daniele and the Sacrificio di Isacco, both by Giacomo Carissimi. Her court at Palazzo Riario, her permanent residence since 1663, was attended by the greatest names that the musical scene could offer. Giacomo Carissimi was her first chapel master, others were Alessandro Scarlatti, Arcangelo Corelli and many more. The Accademia Reale, founded by Cristina, had as its main goal that of discussing about philosophical issues, literature and poetry. Music had a very important role in it, as it opened and closed each session, and it was also performed between parts of the sessions. The very first session of the Accademia was on the 24th of January 1656, when she was still in Palazzo Farnese, which was her first residence in Rome. But it became a regular happening only when she was firmly established in Palazzo Riario. The first official meeting of the Accademia Reale was on the 11th of November 1674. We have very little information about the music played during the Academias. One famous Accademia was in May 1676, where, the mo uh, where most probably the Serenata da Mone in Clori, or La Forza delle Stelle, personally commissioned by Cristina herself to composer Alessandro Stradella, was performed. 
What is interesting is some documents I found regarding the commission where Christina herself carefully chooses the voices, the instruments, the topic, the types of arias, the madrigal that closes the serenata. Christina not only loved music, she was a real expert in the art. Apart from these two examples, we know very little about the music that was performed during the many sessions of the Academia. What we know is that Christina loved cantatas, serenatas, opera arias, but especially madrigals. She organized many musical events during Carnival, which was the time of the year where there were when there were no restrictions or very few restrictions. During Lent, she organized many oratorios, performed especially at the many colleges in Rome, like the Collegio Germanico, the Collegio Romano, and the Collegio Clementino. But the greatest gift that Cristina gave Rome was the first public theater, the Teatro Tordinona. Built on the site where the prisons of the Tordinona used to stand, on the other side of the river Tiber opposite Castel Sant'Angelo, among the illustrious guests of those prisons, there were Giordano Bruno and the painter Caravaggio. It was actually thanks to Pope, the, uh, to Pope Clement IX that Christina obtained the permission to build the theatre, and also the Pope succeeding him was not an obstacle to it. So it was inaugurated on the 8th of January 1671. With the opera Scipione Africano by Francesco Cavalli, a special prologue dedicated to the Queen composed by Alessandro Stradella. Not only Rome had its first public theatre. The first public theatre in Europe was opened in Venice in 1637, but also women singers could perform on a public stage, which was quite something for Rome. The second opera which inaugurated the first season was the novella Giazone by Francesco Cavalli again with prologue by Alessandro Stradella performed on the 24th of January 1671. The Teatro Tordinona unfortunately had a brief life. The last season was in 1674, then it was closed for 16 years until 1690. This was because the new Pope, Innocent XI, was totally against theatre and music. Christina never saw it open again in her lifetime. She continued to organise music performances in Palazzo Riario, at the various religious colleges, and also at the palaces of friends from aristocratic families. Christina was so important for women singers. She gave them great work opportunities. She even had them perform on a public stage. Her residence had become a sort of private school for women singers. They could be trained by the best singers in town. Some of her chapel masters were also famous castrati singers from the Sistine Chapel, like Loreto Vittori, for example. Some singers also lived in Palazzo Riario. Women singers were not allowed to attend the prestigious music schools that were in Rome, so they were normally trained privately or in convents. Their teachers would normally take care also of their careers, providing, uh, providing them with uh, um, opportunities for work. Singers used to travel a lot for work. Sometimes the ruling class of the different cities in Italy would exchange their singers with other rulers and aristocrats. Christina is said to have been very jealous of her singers. Life for women singers was not easy in Rome. Before 1550, they were forbidden to perform. Female roles were performed by young boys. Dramas had special performances for female audiences only and for male audiences only. Especially after Innocent XI became Pope, he closed the Tordinona and banned women singers from performing. About 60 or 70 of them were suddenly left jobless. So Christina hosted some of them in her palace and tried to find accommodation for them in the convent of Santa Brigitta, which, is not, which was not far from Palazzo Riario. The Pope wanted women singers to either leave Rome or go and live in convents. The four women singers we know of, whose lives and careers are illustrated in my book, were Antonia Coresi, Maria Landini, Angelica Quadrelli and Angelica Voglia also known with the nickname of La Giorgina. Some of them performed on the, on the public stage of the Teatro Tordinona, others performed in the private theatres and at the Palazzo Riario. 
We would definitely need more patrons and patronesses like Queen Christina today. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>